Okay, so you know how almost every mobile game flexes their animation when promoting the title? Animation, 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 animation. Anime. Well, Faye doesn't do that, despite having godlike animations. Like in the App Store, what are they using to promote their game? Epic Quest? The story? Stop the cap! <laughs> Stop the cap right now! But you know what? That's fine. Being a massive Fire Emblem crossover game in itself is enough to get a gajillion downloads. Good animation or not, people will definitely get the game anyways because of the history of the FE franchise. But that's besides the point. What I'm trying to say is, damn! The presentation in this game is amazing, from the character artworks, the chibi sprites, and of course, the animations. Like, there is a lot of thought that's put into them. It's a shame that not everyone notices it, because most people play with animations off, and you know what? I don't blame you. Some of these animations take quite a while to finish, and you know, we gotta be productive with our time nowadays. Yeah. That's fine. Nonetheless, in this video, I'll be talking about the animation in Fire Emblem Heroes because no one else ever will. To start things off, let's talk about the first bit of animation you see in the home screen. The standing poses. In this menu, you see some of your heroes just chilling, breathing, and yeah, they're, they're all doing the same pose. Still, that's not so much of a problem. I mean, there are only so many ways you can stand still. At the launch of the game, animations were heavily reused for heroes who have the same weapon and move type class. From the attacks, the idle poses, and the neutral animations, almost every character acted similarly. For some heroes, it made sense to have the same animations, such as Krom and Lucina, the Hoshida ninjas, or just fighters that have similar classes. But by having characters all share the same animations, it definitely makes them look bland. Luckily, things would change. After some time, heroes would start to distinct themselves from one another. Not just from their preferred weapon or unique skills. No, new characters would now have special animations. You've heard of power creep. You've heard of speed creep. But have you heard of animation creep? Yep, almost every hero now has a set of animation that is unique to them, making everyone feel fresh and recognizable. Even the standing positions have a neat twist to them. For example, take a look at some of the infantry sword units. Violet is standing in a pretty dull way, effortlessly holding the sword of the creator, which matches well with his lack of emotions. On the other hand, his female counterpart has her wrist bent, which adds some feminine touch to the pose. Brave Celica has her legs crossed, which is a thing she does in a lot of her art. Levitine is holding her blade in a very interesting way, having the palm of her hand facing upwards. For the majority of armored units, everyone is standing with a high and straight posture, always on guard. This makes sense since wearing heavy equipment does require you to be up straight. But then there's Hilda, being all joyful and lax, which fits her personality and is she even wearing heavy armor? Most of the mounted units have the same pose, minus the way they hold their weapon. Obviously, nothing wrong with that since, again, there's not too many different ways to sit on a mount. Now, let's talk about some of the more dynamic animations. Yup, the battle entrances. Upon starting a level or a turn, characters will do some sort of playful movement, which can also be seen when casting rally skills. Most of the weapon users all have a splitting animation and I love it. People swinging their blades is one of the coolest things to look at, and to have your heroes spinning their weapons in sync is just so satisfying to watch. Now, not everyone spins their objects in a fancy way. The tome users, for example, are more delicate, and you know, that makes sense since you shouldn't be throwing and swinging your books all over the place. Even if mages aren't doing anything too dynamic with their weapons, their animations are still quite charming. Mikaya's entrance is graceful and elegant. Sonia is just wow. Wow, that looks good. Ophelia's dramatic posing is really entertaining to watch, and Ewan, he's just happy to be here. And by the way, can we talk about Noel's animation? It's so good! At the start, he closes his eyes, but when his tone passes his face, he opens them and is ready to fight. Like, look at it. That's clean. But you know what else is clean? The idle animations. Some characters have unique quirks when they're idle. You got Yarn, stretching in the middle of the battle, which is a reference to his awakening art. Sophus, while waiting for orders, is seen yawning. And there's Claude twirling his arrow. Also, instead of plainly standing, characters are now posing similarly to their neutral artwork. Some examples include Summer Lawrence, Young Mart, Shinon, Layla, Picnic Flora, Norn, Ileana, Lacey. 
But enough about that, let's dive into some more lively movement, the battle animations. This is why you want to turn on animations. They can be time consuming, but they're worth it most of the time. The special procs, for example, are pretty satisfying to look at. Everyone does a unique movement to prepare for their next attack. Because it's a special move, they all do a serious wind-up. And then there's a wing. It's probably one of my favorite animations in the game. It's so in character of him to do these dramatic poses. Other heroes with cool special procs are the characters that have a stand right beside them. You got Fallen Berkut and Minea, Yuna appearing alongside Mikaya, and all the Tokyo Mirage session units. Beasts and Dragon units also have fantastic animations. Their transformations are especially entertaining. Seeing them power up feels great. Like you know things are about to get down when they're at full strength. I mean just look at the Beast units. Their stances are so clean. It's just as hype as Attack on Titan transformations. And when they attack, god that looks painful. But that's nothing compared to the Tome units. Oh my god. The animation. It's beautiful. It's like they used a whole budget for these characters. Well at least I know where my money's going now. One thing I love about the Tomes animations is that they pull no punches. They look like they're gonna kill, and well, they are. You got Tarja summoning the ghosts underneath your bed, Lysithia sending you to the Shadow Realm, Sanaki throwing out a spirit bomb, Guinevere coming straight out of Smash's World of Light, Sias using Solar Beam, Young Leon using Draco Meteor, Sophia just. Holy crap! Her attack side gotta go up after that. And finally, there's Oliver, blessing your eyes with his stunning beauty. God, these animations are so good. And Overkill. No wonders most magic units have an attack super boon. However, there are still other type of heroes that I have yet to cover, the special ones. This includes the seasonal units, which are characters that are participating in a special holiday or event. These heroes are not only dressed for the occasion, but they also fight in a way that matches it, which is pretty neat. There's Halloween Mer trying to scare you before doing her transformation, Winter Bernadetta isolating herself in a house for her attack, Swari Ishtar summoning curtains and dancing before her strike, Summer Takumi enjoying the summer breeze being all happy, and Picnic Fiora, the, the dabbing? Another cool thing about the special heroes are their weapons, as they also match the theme of the banner. For example, Halloween weapons had candy effects, Christmas units make presents appear out of tin air, summer heroes got water, Plagian attacks have sand and green with symbol, bridal units pop out flowers, and so on and so forth. This is neat and all, but it can also lead to some goofy interactions due to the absurd seasonal weapons. Like there's Halloween Kagero chugging wine bottles at her opponents, New Year Takumi flinging mochi at his opponents, Summer Leo with tomatoes, Spring Fur slicing you with a carrot, and imagine killing the goddess of death with a candy cane. The fact that you can inherit these weapons also make funny combinations. Mercedes elegantly swinging a palm tree, Owain posing confidently with a shovel, Nijahana dual wielding present bags, Fallen Ike being so grim with a bouquet. Oh my god, actually the fallen heroes, these guys are something else. They aren't special heroes, but their animations certainly are. Fallen heroes, as their name implies, are characters that have fallen from grace. They are plunged in darkness, whether it's because they are being possessed, being brainwashed, being blinded by vengeance, going berserk and being unable to control their power, or they're just an insanely crazy person like Ashnard. But then there's female Corrin. Like, I know she's in pain, but it really looks like she's having a stomach ache or something. From the voice lines, to the art, to the animations, it is clear that these fallen characters are not okay, and it's painful to look at. Like speculating which hero will be on the fallen banner is fun and all, but when that person gets in and you see them hurt, man do you feel guilty for using them. Like I joked about female Corrin, but her screech just feels so real. Each fallen hero is shrouded in purple smoke, and their attacks too display this effect. This emphasizes well their evil demeanor. Not only that, but they all look so done with their life. Oh my god, Edelgard, why do you look so sad? Oh shit, oh shit! Alright, that animation was definitely goofy, but man was it smooth and deadly looking. But that is nothing compared to another type of unit, the legendary and mythic heroes. Unlike some other characters, their animations are based on their home titles, and they even have a unique animation when they're about to KO their opponent. You got Fjorm doing a smooth and beautiful somersault, Ike doing his trident through ether, Mart doing his smash's dancing blade, Roy using his GBA crit animation. 
Ephraim skillfully spinning his lance, Hector swinging Armand's like it's nothing, Lucina and Claude doing a flip before shooting, Leaf off at Celica channeling their strength before firing, Azura trying to drown people, Lelina trying to burn people, Dimitri trying to overkill people, and Edelgard attempting to make the biggest home run. Mythic heroes are also on another level when it comes to special effects. Like damn, you can see Lyft's breath in his idol animation. Also, his KO attack is pretty sick. Actually, not just him, but every mythic hero's attack is amazing, being both destructive and dazzling at the same time. All of them are striking either sheer strength or insane magical prowess. Or you could be like Regan and fire missiles at your target. Another cool thing is the summoner's animation. The melee weapons are definitely my favorite ones, as you can see the summoner using his telekinetic powers. <laughs> My sword hand twitches. Alright, I think I covered all the animations I wanted to talk about. I know I probably missed out on some, but uh, the point is, face combat animation is pretty dope. Surprisingly, a lot of thought is put into them, which is absurd considering the growing number of units in the game. Also, the in-game cutscenes are really well done. Not surprising as it's made by the same studio that did the ones from Fates and Awakening. In the end, it's really cool to see how much effort Ayas puts into the game's animation. Well, except for the duo heroes. Oh, fun! He's just standing there, menacingly! 